Good morning. Good morning. It's Tune In Tuesday. It's no, I just if I do that, people are like, he's gonna do it. He's gonna today is gonna be the day that he's gonna sing again, and then I don't, and then people are like, well, I have to tune in next week and see if he sings again. It makes me sad every time. <laughs> I have to go home and sing it to it's myself. It's Tune In Tuesday. Tuesdays for tune in, tune in on Tuesday. Everybody tune in and that's you. <laughs> yes. Good morning. Good morning, and welcome to Tune In Tuesday. Good morning, Carolyn. I hope you had a good birthday. Uh, it is. Getting cooler in the morning. Yeah, you can see that. I'm currently wearing long underwear underneath my kayaking pants because it's two. <laughs> yeah. Yesterday yesterday was the first day that uh, in order to drive Riley to school, I went out 10 minutes earlier and started the vehicle. Oh, good morning, Leanne. Good morning, Don. And good morning, Tanya. Happy anniversary. There was... There was, the hibiscus have come inside. They're out in, in the kitchen, but okay. they're inside now. So it's that time of year. Tis the season. Tis the season. We, started, lane. we started talking the other day about um, tuning up the snowblower. These are things I don't have to think about because I live on my own in yeah. a condo. Good morning, Brenda. Almost daylight saving. Mm. <laughs> yes. Good morning, Elizabeth. Good morning. All right, so it's Tune In Tuesday. It sure is. That means we tune in to what we talked about on Sunday. And uh, on Sunday, I, I have to confess, I wrote the acronyms so I would remember what they were. Because <laughs> I'm like, um, I read a really good article that said, if the pastor can't remember what they spoke about, then no, no one else will. <laughs> Right? Yes. Good morning, Karen. Yep. And so I'm like, I'm writing an acronym that I will remember and I'll share it with everyone uh, with you. And I was actually repeating it on my way here today. <laughs> and uh, and after church on somebody, uh, after church on Sunday, um, just in the conversations that we were in, people were like, speak peace, speak peace. <laughs> I'm like, oh. Yeah. It's there. It. It's speak. Yeah. Good. So. What did we talk about on Sunday? I might have just I think you might have, yeah, a, an idea of what have, we talked about on Sunday. Or if right. you read Elizabeth's post from yesterday, like two thumbs way up, way up, Elizabeth. Um, she did an excellent job of unpacking that, and so mm -hmm. uh, we'll have to. We might have to share that. Yes. So, mm -hmm. what is it? Yes. Thank you, Brenda. <laughs> Who was at service on Sunday? Uh, yes. So, good morning, uh, Har uh, Harriet. Um, we talked about peace. 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 Last week it was mercy. This week it's peace. And, you know, peace isn't just a Christmas thing, you know, and peace on earth to those who, who right. need favors. Um, and But peace really is, I said in the top ten things that people seek after, it's probably yeah. in the top three things that people seek after. Yeah, it's true. It, yeah, and, and it was interesting. I, and I mean, I've heard it said a number of times, but I forget often. Um, peace is not the absence of conflict. Correct. Uh, peace really is the presence of Jesus in the midst of that conflict. Mm. Uh, that is that is where, or how we find peace. Uh, but conflict is is present. Jesus says it himself. We've said this a number of times. Uh, he says to his, to his disciples, in this world you will have trouble, but I have overcome the world. Yes. <clears throat> and so there's always going to be difficulty. There's always going to be trouble. There's always going to be situations or relationships that are fractured and need the peace of Christ mm -hmm. in there. Um, and, and, I mean... <laughs> There's so much just about peace, right? The peace of Christ, which surpasses all understanding. Um, it, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Um, but but the, the fact that there's always going to be difficulties, there's always going to be those situations, means that reconciliation needs to happen. Yeah. And, and we've been called ministers of reconciliation, which speaks 
um, I think primarily to us inviting the world to be reconciled mm. to God. That's God yes. wants the world to be reconciled and he calls us into that mission. But then there's also like you and I need to be reconciled at times. Family members need to be reconciled at times. You and the driver who cut you off this morning need to be reconciled. And um, John Grant during um, Minister's Conference was sharing a story about, um, you know, getting out of his car to apologize. And his daughters were like, don't get out of the car, Dad. Don't like that. That means something different. But uh, but he he realized the need for reconciliation. He's yeah. like, I am sorry. I I was wrong. Um, so reconciliation is always going to be something that we need to yeah. uh, seek in our lives. And so on Sunday, he said something, and and I I realized that this is you know in the, the greatest barrier to reconciliation. Um, so you said that uh, reconciliation begins with sacrifice. Mm. And that was a hard word to hear. <laughs> um, well, because the reason why there's always going to be discord is because we're human people. Mm -hmm. We have this old self that wants its own way. And when we bump up against someone who also wants their own way, well, that's why peace actually takes sacrifice. Right. Because I'm going to have to give up something, sacrifice. Jay's going to have to give up something, sacrifice in order to have peace and that's not compromise we're not talking about compromise right. we're actually seeking to understand each other yeah. and and come to an agreement okay of what is you know what what's the direction forward mm -hmm. and so when we talk about the fact that peace or reconciliation begins with sacrifice it's actually uh, recognizing that christ sacrificed for us yeah to bring us peace. And yeah. so we then model that and we walk in with that. Yeah. And then you didn't stop there because that sacrifice was death. Jesus actually had to die on the cross. And so the the question for me then becomes what in my life needs to be sacrificed? What mm. needs what needs to die in order for me to be able to pursue reconciliation? And I think that there's there are instances where it's very obvious in there's a fractured relationship and I know this needs to die in order for this relationship to move forward. But then there's also the reality that I may be there may be something that needs to just die in my life in general mm. because it is acting as a barrier to moving forward mm. in relationship in general. It's not even about specific relationships. It's Jay, you're not an easy person to have relationship with because right. of this thing in your life that needs to die completely. Mm. And I don't like that, Jen. <laughs> oh, that just got pinchy in my own spirit. Mm. Um, it's interesting when you talked about in order for relationship to happen, often something has to die. Like I cannot count the number of times my dad turned off the TV so that he could play a game with us. Mm -hmm. Right? So in order to build a relationship with his daughters, my dad actually had to sacrifice the hockey game, had to sacrifice whatever it was that he was watching. Because yeah. we would say, Dad, do you want to come play with us? And he would, that's a sacrifice. And that's a very tangible, mm -hmm. you know, as, as, we were as you were talking, I thought, in a relationship between a husband and wife, what needs to sacrifice? Mm -hmm. Maybe it is getting up 15 minutes earlier for one of the two of you to put the garbage out, right? Yeah. As a blessing to, right? That's a sacrifice. Yeah. That's a giving up something in order actually to bring reconciliation, to bring peace. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it is, you know, giving up that second coffee so that you can actually get to the new TV that you need, right? right? Like, yeah. or your whatever it is. Yeah. But, but for reconciliation, for, for peace, because like you said, there are aspects in me that I'm like, ooh, if people bumped up against mm -hmm. those, mm -hmm. like, that's not good. It's funny they mentioned the sports because um, on Sunday, we had extensive conversation with one of our children. <laughs> and, um, and after that, there was a little bit of a cool down period. And um, that, that child came to me and said, can you help me fix my bike? And I was in the middle of watching a really good football game. Were the Bills playing? The Bills were oh. 
uh, they were en route to a comeback victory. It was wonderful. And, um, and I said, I think we can work on it in the living room. So let's bring it in the house. And so he brought it in the house. But then we realized we didn't have, there was a socket that we needed that we didn't have. And, um, and I could have said, well, one day we'll get that socket and we will fix your bike. And instead I said, let's go to Canadian Tire now to look for that socket. Um, and then I learned that when I need tools, I need to stop going to Canadian Tire because it's not the right place. <laughs> they never have what I'm looking for. Anyways, that's... <laughs> Henry. <Dan. laughs> that's right. So I ended up talking to Sam who had Sam. the socket and the extender. It was the extender that I needed. But, um, but that relationship is far more important than the football game. And, it's, and, and he needs to know that. My child needs to know that that is not as important as the relationship with, with him. And so when we make sacrifice in order to reconcile, we are saying peace is more important than this character trait that I'm clinging to mm. or this, the, that's just me. That's just the way I do things. That actually does not lead to reconciliation. No. Uh, or, or like, yeah, that's just me. Get over it. That's a no, no. That's, that's not <laughs> reconciliation. It does not happen. With, no. That's just the way I am and deal with it or get over it. Which is interesting because so much in what I read now is just be yourself, be yourself, you know, and if they can't accept you, well then you don't need them in your life. And I'm like, that is so ungodly. Right. There is like, there is an aspect of you need to have the freedom to be who you are and to express yourself in the ways that you've been created to to express yourself. You have been uniquely made, knit together in your mother's womb by the mm -hmm. creator of the universe for a purpose that he has set before you. Be yourself, 100%. And, and recognize the need to have things die in order to have relationship with. Right like in order to have reconciliation yeah um you know there is there are aspects of like in and jesus even talks about the disciples wipe the dust off your shoes and leave there there are certain situations where it's not gonna happen or it needs to be you need to be removed from that and allow just allow god to work the reconciliation in in those situations but not before you've exhausted your options right yeah. which like what in me needs to go be and and that's it the other person might not even like they there are things that the other person may need to sacrifice in their lives that they need to get rid of things in order to bring reconciliation to the relationship but that's not your responsibility no you are your responsibility my responsibility is to say what what am i clinging to here yeah. that needs to be Put on the cross. Yeah, because if you uh, remember, Second um, Corinthians five twenty one says um, God made him who had no sin yeah. to be sin for us, so that we might become the righteousness of God. So what, you know, and this comes back to mercy and peace, right? Like, what are the things that we have to give up? What are the things that we actually have to withhold? Mm -hmm. You know, as in order to bring peace, because Jesus didn't deserve any of that, and yet. He took on our sinfulness so that we could be at peace with God. So we might have to pick up something that is really uncomfortable mm -hmm. in order to bring peace and reconciliation. Yep. And it's one step at a time. And that's what um, uh, Pastor Adam said yesterday on yesterday's Devos. Is it's, just, it's one step at a time. You don't have to have it all figured out. But God is faithful. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Mm -hmm. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. So it's just one step at a time. And for some of you, there will be situations in your life where it really will be just extend peace here, extend peace here. And uh, one of the things that, um, that really stood out to me about the speak peace the first one is it starts with you. Like if you're not mm. at peace in mm. yourself, it's going to be really hard to extend peace to other people. Yep. yep. I know we're already all convicted. 
we're a little yeah. bit like flabbergasted at what we've talked about. Mm -hmm. All right then, you should pray. I gonna do that. <laughs> Heavenly Father, peace starts with us. Mm. Well, peace starts with Jesus, um, but by the presence of the Holy Spirit, you bring conviction and you point us to areas in our lives that need to be dealt with in order for there to be peace. And that may pertain to specific relationships uh, for some of us. And that may just pertain to a way of living and being and a persona that we, that we give off. Um, whatever it is, Lord, wherever you are placing conviction in each of our lives, my prayer is that we would respond that we would pay attention and that we would identify those things and lay them on the cross, mm. that we would sacrifice them, that we would uh, trust Jesus uh, in the midst of that situation, Lord. As we seek to be people who speak peace, may we first listen We pray this through Jesus. Amen. Oh, I'm convicted. Mm. Mm. <laughs> we hope you're convicted too. Peace requires sacrifice. Yeah. And, you know, wherever it begins, the Lord will be there to help you. Because it really is about helping your community, whatever that is, in your family, friends, neighbors, co-workers, community. Yeah. But his heart is that you would help your community experience Christ today. Mm -hmm. So go extend peace. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.